Now it's time for another Board Game Brawl preview with Nick Meenahan, sponsored by BoardGameBliss.com. Hey folks, my name is Nick, this is Board Game Brawl, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. That game is called Karma Ka, and it's from the publisher's Hemisphere Games. Now, if you like what you see throughout the rest of this preview video, I'm going to encourage you to go to the official Kickstarter project page for Karma Ka. There's going to be a pre uh, preview link up in the top corner of your screen, and then down in the description section underneath the video, those will take you to the Kickstarter project page. You can find out more information and hopefully consider backing the project. Now, Karma Karmaka is a hand management card game where thematically you are trying to reincarnate up to the point of transcendence, as many cultures believe, where you start off as a lowly life form, in the case of this game, a dung beetle, and then you work your way up to serpent, and then to wolf, and then to um, a primate, and then eventually you transcend the mortal coil. But that's a long journey. And in order to get there, you're going to need to perform good deeds as you go throughout each of these different lives. This is where the mechanical aspect of the game comes in. You have a hand of cards and also a deck of cards that you are going to be using in order to uh, perform these good deeds and use special abilities to make these good deeds easier or to stymie your opponents. Now, you can also set aside cards for your future life as well. You're essentially storing karma for your next life. And when you use abilities, you're also potentially giving karma to your opponents. Or I should say, if you use your abilities against them, karma will come back to haunt you, and they'll get to use those same cards against you, potentially, in the next life. That's karma, you know? So, let's go ahead and take a brief look at how the game works with a prototype version of the game. So what you see here may change in the final version. Then we're going to come back. I'll give you my final thoughts. Okay, I'm going to give you a brief look at Karma Ka. This is a competitive game for two to four players. The goal of the game is to be the first one to reincarnate into Transcendence. Everyone starts off as a lowly dung beetle at the bottom of the evolutionary ladder here. But you're going to go through this life and hopefully get do enough good deeds, which will get you, uh, which means acquiring enough points to move up to the next rung of life, which is a serpent. Then you move up to wolf. Then you move up to primate. And then the first person to get up to Transcendence will win the game. But how do you get to that point? Well, let's talk a little bit more about the setup. So you're going to have the board out here with the player pawns of each appropriate color. And the game can be played with two players as well. Um, and then you have the well rings. We'll get back to these. But essentially, these are extra points you can use to move up the Transcendence ladder. And these can actually carry over from life to to life. There's going to be a main deck of cards and you'll actually leave room for a discard pile which will be called the ruins from here on out. Every player is going to start off with four random cards from the deck as well as two additional cards which make your own personal deck. Um, and then you'll also leave some extra space for future life. Uh, and then you'll have some little rule cheat sheet cards as well. Once you get done with this initial setup then you're going to be ready to play the game. All right, so let me describe how the normal turn order of the game is going to work and what you'll usually be doing on your turn. You're going to use the cards that you have in hand in a multitude of different ways. In a normal turn, like the first turn of the game, the first thing you do is draw a card from your deck. Then you play a card from your hand, or if you or you have the option of passing if your deck is not empty. If your deck is empty, however, and you have cards in hand, then you're going to have to play a card. If both your deck and your hand are empty, then it's time to reincarnate, but we're gonna get back to that in a minute. So, playing a card from, a, from your hand, I'm gonna go over what the cards do in a moment. Uh, you can use it in three different ways. The first way is just to play a card for its points. Every card has a point value up in the top left corner of the card. These are what you're gonna use to try and re reincarnate. So, you simply take one of your cards from your hand and you place it face up in your play area between your deck and your potential future life area, which we'll get to in a moment. You just put it there and that's going to count potentially as points at the end of the game. The thing is, I'm sorry, at the end of uh, when you're going to reincarnate. Now, the thing is, when it's time for you to reincarnate, the only you're only going to score the, the color that you have the majority of. 
Or I'm sorry, to put that more appropriately, you can only choose one color from amongst all the deed cards that you've played face down. So you're going to want to choose the color that's going to give you the most points. You can also add karmic rings into that mix as well. But again, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We'll come back to reincarnation in a minute. So one thing you can do is place cards down to get points. But you could also use a card for its ability. Every card has an ability at the bottom uh, part of the card. You can use the card that you, instead of using it for points, you use it for its ability. However, by doing that, you're invoking karma from the other players. You have to, the, once, once you've resolved the ability of the card, you have to give that card, or at least offer that card, and then the opponent may take it or not, uh, to the rival that you're using it against. In a two-player game, you just offer it to your rival. In a three- or four-player game, it's whoever you are using the card against. Um, if it's a card that only affects you, then your opponents get a chance, every, all of your opponents get a chance at the card going from clockwise order. So, for instance, if I use the Voyage card, um, after I get done resolving its effect, I offer it to the player to my left, and if they decide they want it, they're actually going to put it into the start of their future lives pile, or their continue their future lives pile if they've already got cards there. If none of my opponents choose to take that card, it goes into the ruins, the discard pile um, next to the main deck. In other words, you yourself are not going to be able to take that card and put it into your future life. That's karma, buddy. And finally, we've already kind of mentioned this, but the last thing that you can do with the card from your hand is use it to start off your future life and to continue to add to your future life. You look at the card and put it down, but you don't reveal it to any of the other players. When you reincarnate, these are the cards you're, you're going to take back into hand to begin your new life with and to go through all of this again, using them for their abilities, their points, and so on. Now let's talk about that reincarnation finally. Now, when it happens that it's time for a player's turn, but they, they have no cards to play and they have no cards to draw from their deck because both their hand and their deck are empty it's time for them to die and be reborn. Now, when this happens, you are forfeiting your entire turn. You don't get to do anything else. Your opponents just keep, keep doing what they're doing um, as you give forfeit your entire turn just to reincarnate. But let's say that this were, uh, were, these were the cards that I had out there as my deeds. It's five points. I'm able to move up to the next rung. Let's say that I am the blue player because I scored enough points to go up to the serpent. Now, if I had had rings from previous turns because of some cards that I've played, then I would be able to spend those as well if I uh, needed to have that extra little boost. Now, if at any point this moves someone, let's just say that this is the game state, if this ever moves someone up into pure transcendence, Game over, that player is going to win the game. Otherwise, if you're just moving up to one of the normal quote-unquote rings, you're just reborn. And what does that mean? What does it mean to go through a rebirth? First off, whatever deeds that you had placed before are going to go into the ruins. They've already served their purpose, so they're going to go into the discard pile. This is when you're going to take all the cards. Let's say that this is my future life pile. This is when I'm going to take all the cards that were in my future life pile, and this constitutes my new hand of cards. But you're not done quite yet. You have to form a new deck of cards. Now, if you're lucky, if you really were sewing away for the future, you might end up with six cards in your hand, in which case nothing's going to happen. But if you have fewer than six cards in your hand, you have to take cards from the well, which is the deck, um, until you have a combined total of six cards between your hand and your deck. This constitutes your new life and what you're going to be able to do for this new life of yours before you move up to the next ring on the ladder. Do note, however, that because it's a deck, you're not just going to be able to look at it. You can only look at the cards in your hand. Remember that the normal rule on a turn is that the first thing you do is draw a card from your deck. So this is still hidden information from you. But that's it. I mean, that is how the game is going to work from turn to turn. You draw a card, you play a card in one of three different ways, unless you can't, and then it's time to score whatever deeds that you have along with any well rings and hopefully go up to the next ladder of life. But of course, you want to know what those cards do. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of those cards. They actually come in four different, we'll, we'll call them suits, uh, for lack of a better word, four different types of um, elements of life. Uh, you have green, blue, red, and you have the mosaic cards. Uh, we'll get back to those. So the green cards are all about life, of course, um, and they come in ones, twos, and threes as far as points go for each of the different suits. You have recycle, which says uh, its special ability move one of the top three ruins onto your future life. Longevity, deal two cards from the well uh, onto any player's deck. Denial. Ruin a card from your hand. Play a copy of that card's ability. 
Ruin, by the way, is putting a card into the discard pile, the, the ruins, which I guess makes sense. <laughs> I guess you probably already knew that. Um, then you have Swindle. Look at, I like this artwork. Uh, play it. Look at three random cards from a rival's hand. Take one into your hand. So in that very, that uh, of regard, of course, if you're doing that, they're definitely going to be taking this card as karma, potentially, unless they choose not to have that card. Uh, and red cards are definitely attack based. So for instance, Hell's Heart. Ruin the top two cards of a rival's future life. And Spite, ruin two random cards from a rival's hand. But then you have the mosaic cards. Now the mosaic cards can count as any color and they're all going to be uh, one point. But what that means is that when you're choosing the one color to score when it's time to reincarnate, you can always include the mosaic cards. The embody here says choose for a special ability says choose one of your deeds, play a copy of that deed's ability, and mimic says choose any rival's exposed deed, play a copy of that deed's ability. I like that artwork too. I used to have chameleons. So that's it. That's a quick and dirty run through of Karmakot. You are playing cards multiple ways in order to move up the uh, the reincarnation ladder um, in order to gain transcendence. Transcend transcendence. <laughs> and the first person to get us to transcendence is it's always going to be blue because blue is awesome. Is going to be the winner of the game. Now let's get to my final thoughts. Now, I will say regarding Karmaka that uh, and normally in the case of my previews, I go out of my way to extricate my uh, final opinion from any aspect of the game because that goes beyond the purview of a preview. That goes into uh, review territory. But it's glaringly obvious, that, and I have to say, that the artwork for Karmaka is really stellar. I think most people would agree with me on that, with uh, not at the risk of being too opinionated here. And it's the first thing that you're going to notice about the game. It is very, very striking compared to any other card game that is out there right now, with some exceptions, like Dixit, for, ex for instance. Um, but it is right in that territory. So right then and there, you're going to catch a lot of eyes on the project and on the game. But the fact is, there is an interesting game here to be had as well, especially thematically. Uh, this is a theme that I, I'm i not entirely sure I've seen in too many other games. There is uh, some idea of uh, being reborn, of um, yeah, resurrection and life in some other games. But to explicitly go for reincarnation and actually going through the different steps of that and having the theme so tightly wound to the game mechanisms is a very interesting thing that I haven't seen in really any game that I can recall. So right then and there, between the artwork and the theme, you've got the potential for something very interesting that a lot of people are going to be intrigued by. But then you go on to the game mechanisms, which also are very interesting because it is, at first you're like, well, you're building a deck and you can actually set aside cards for the the next life, which makes it a bit of a deck building game, but it doesn't feel that way. Rather, you are, it is more about hand management and deciding how you want to use a card in multiple ways. I uh, have said multiple times on my channel throughout the years that uh, I always appreciate when a game has, uh, a card game has mechanisms that allow you to use a card for multiple things, and that is definitely the, the primary pivot point of this game, where you are using a card either as points for your deeds, where you are using it for its special ability, where you are stowing it away for the next life and hoping that it will do you better there than in there. For instance, you may say, well, if I can only score one point for my deeds anyways, then what is the point of me having these red cards? But perhaps red will be better for me next time, where I can be a little more vicious to my opponents because of their abilities, if nothing else. So I'll go ahead and stow those for now and focus on these other things. And hopefully maybe I'll even have some mosaic cards as well to really help even things out. So there's a lot of interesting dynamics here between how you choose to use a card, especially going back to the theme and how the karma system works and how you can use an ability card against someone or even for yourself but one of your opponents is going to get that karma in return and be able to take that card if they want it. Even if they don't, it just goes into the ruins, into the discard pile. So you're not going to gain anything else for that. So you have to be very careful how you use those abilities, powerful though they may be. And the more, uh, the higher the number on a card, which means it could be a better deed for you, the more powerful the ability. Do you give up those points or do you go for the very powerful ability? That's a, just one example of the decision making that you have to make in this game and the whole system of how you reincarnate when you can't do anything else and you hope for the best that you can score whatever you can. 
there's just a lot of interesting things going on here that are very surprisingly tightly bound to the theme of the game. And in the midst of all of me saying this, which it makes it sound somewhat complicated, it's really not. The game is very easy to learn, very fast to learn, very quick to set up, and very quick to play as well. So I think that this game is going to have a lot of appeal to people who, again, are really struck by the artwork, struck by the theme, but also can get into this sort of light hand management game. Definitely family weight, although definitely accessible to harder core gamers, if I could coin a phrase that actually doesn't exist, harder core. But uh, definitely for all of these different groups of people, it's going to potentially work if they're into that theme, if they're into these types of card games. It definitely um, hits home in those separate areas. And uh, really has, with that theme and artwork, stands apart from the rest in that pack. So if this sounds like it's up your alley, if it sounds like something someone you know might appreciate, go to the Kickstarter project page. You don't have to take my word for it. Just go there, find out more information. You can follow the link up in the top corner of your screen. You can follow the link down in the description section underneath this video. That'll take you there. You can find out more info, and hopefully you'll consider backing the project. That is Karma Ka from the publisher Hemisphere Games. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. And make sure to check out our sponsor, Board Game Bliss, where you can find an amazing selection of games from around the world. BoardGameBliss.com. Thanks for your support.